The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Double, uh, I heard the ringing as well as my speaking before, so I said, let me get out of Skype and call back, and now I can't get back on, so I'm right on the telephone the old-fashioned way. All right, so this is what we're looking at. You see the Dow is down 183 at 34,255. Now, I want to do this real quickly. I'll give you, these are the charts that we're looking at, the technique that I used. Um, this is the top right here on August 1st for the Dow. And then we waited and waited to see when these, the nine period moving average would confirm a sell signal that could be upgraded to a sell mode and it eventually turned down pink. And then there was a one day, a couple of days ago, where it went green again. The 914 went, went uh, um, slightly um, positive, but it reversed immediately. And now, look, here's the gray is the, the price of the Dow. But look at this. Here's the S&P with one hand. Here's the S&P. Look at that. It also turned down to pink. This is a daily chart. But wait a minute. The QQQ also couple of days ago, went pink, uh, down 4 at 360.39. Here's the IWM. The uh, IWM is, hasn't gone green since it went pink way back um, early August. But wait, look, look what happened. The weekly chart on the Russell 2000 just t turned pink. This is the weekly chart. The others haven't yet, so it's going to be really important. I'm going to discuss my scenario in a moment, let's just get back to the daily charts, and I'll show you something else. The SMHs, the semiconductors, are really important. They are very weak today. They're down to $1.68 to $141.94. Look at this. The 9 is way under the 14. The price is way under the 9. It's the exact opposite of what we're looking at in the dollar, where the dollar is way above the look, dollar is way above the green 9 period moving average, and the 9 is way above the 14. At 105.49, look what happened to gold. Gold was trying to cross positive, and then it did cross positive for a couple of moments. And yesterday it had a very nice move, hit the 200 period exponential moving average, and now it's down sharply, down 26. So this is a, a market that we've got to monitor really closely. Look at the TLT. That's the bonds down almost two points, 91.11. Look at now it expanded to the downside. Um, and here's the TBT, that is the opposite. This is the uh, short side of the, uh, the ultra-short Neiman uh, Trust. And look at this, sharply higher, nines over the, uh, prices over the nine, nines over the black 14-period moving average. We've got to monitor all of this very, very closely. So as I go back to my charts right here, I, I could see just on the one-minute uh, and the 10-minute charts, that we were getting, I had this arch formation, I drew this in, I don't know if, subscribe, if, if people in the, uh, the den could see it as I was coming on before 10 o'clock, I had already drawn this at, at 10 minutes to 10, I was drawing this arch formation, made a peak D, hit the 200 period moving average, reverse, and I drew a one-to-one -to, -one to the left side, which said at about 9.53, the left side low of 8.30, around about, what, let me give you the exact price in the one minute chart, uh, that was at, 4403.25, that, that would be hit while it did it, and it went below it, went to trough E right there, and now you've got A, B, we're in leg C to the upside as a very oversold early morning sell-off is now attempting, and this is the thing that's been worrying me for a couple of, I, I'd say for about a week and a half, is that the market was so optimistic every time, every intraday, there was a nice rally in the market, um, and by the end of the day, most of the days that had given it up, given it up quite badly, actually. So that just said to me there was way too much optimism going into the uh, Fed speak. So this is the kind of scenario I'm looking at right now. The day is young, so anything can happen. What I would like to see is a very weak close today. 
at least the Dow below 130 and the S&P below 32. Then a lousy session to, tomorrow, Friday, going into uh, a very weak close. And then just really bad news over the weekend. Everyone's talking about the end of the market. The rates are going to the moon, blah, blah, blah. And then Monday, we get that really strong reversal. If today we close only 40 points down and tomorrow's just a meandering day, you can't do it. I want an acceleration, the three-day acceleration, right into Monday's low. And then we should see the VIX index. It's actually a little... There's another problem. The VIX index... Trading right now at, uh, oh, I just did it on the one minute chart. Let's, oh, I'll tell you what it is. Trading at 16.42 up $1.28. Let me get out of that ESZ23 and then we'll get back to the daily charts, weekly charts, etc. Right here, one hand. Getting quite good at this. Maybe it's all that tennis I play. VIX index. Uh, yeah, look at that. This is the VIX index. Just five. Five days ago, it's down in the 12s. Now it's 16.45, 12 to 16, four points, 30%. Wow, this is a big gain. But what's really interesting is that the low that was made a few days ago at 12 point, oh, was that 13? No, it was 13.57. The low that we're looking at is 12.73 uh, the week of the 23rd of June of this year. Uh, let me see, that's uh, 12.73, and retested at 12.74, one penny higher. So this is a peak A, that's a peak B, but we have not started anything fresh. This is still an active B in, uh, leg B. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually do get a leg C over the coming few days, and that goes, wow, that would really have to go higher. That would have to go over 18.88. So you, you won't get that unless the market really starts to turn down again a little later today and then goes like the Dow goes 180 down, the S&P goes back to uh, uh, 45, minus 45. Um, but at this particular point, the speed with which we've gone higher in the VIX index and the amount of move that we've made down in the general market is not quite proportional. Maybe the VIX on the last two days, got a little too excited. So um, that just says to me that maybe there has to be some kind of a rally in the market so that the VIX can pull back. Now, if the VIX by the end of the day, it closes above 16, it's at 1648 um, today, and then tomorrow closes in the 17s Monday. Could be really ugly. And I wouldn't be surprised that the dollar, look, the dollar, the XY, look at this. The dollar, remember, for this is maybe a year and a half, I mean, maybe it's even two years, I've been emphasizing the temporary methodology. The G is important. But when you get to G, I invariably have a parallel count, say G slash C. In this case, it's an F. Uh, why is it an F? Because that high right there, this great peak A, is below that peak C. So that's E slash B, F slash C, and now we've got a D. When you get to a D, other things can happen. I need to talk a little more about the dollar and the other currency. Basil Chapman, I'll be right back, and we're going to try to get back on the stuff. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TF Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're live, we're back, we're back on Skype. And that means I can take this off in a second, just to look live. And I'm getting all my charts back from TradeStation. You'll see me have to get back there. I say after yes. And I'm going to go to my little, uh, type it in. All right, we're all set. And now the charts will come back. So as the charts are coming back, let me just talk a couple of, a couple of moments about the, the, what I'm looking at here. So the larger trend has gone from the daily being very, I wouldn't say serious, but it's been very important to monitor it because I've had sell signals that have gone to sell modes in all the key indices in the daily charts. Within that context, the weekly charts, as I've said now, really for quite some time, I have nothing in the weekly charts that's up until yesterday that even suggests that they're going to give me a change from the buy mode 
to at least a sell signal. And that makes the close going into Friday, 4, four o'clock, where the weekly charts close each bar um, in each time frame, and that'll be the weekly time frame. What happens there is going to be very important going into Monday. Could it be that we get almost a sell signal uh, at Friday's close, and then intraday Monday, it's like a sell mode because it's so sharply down, and then we get that big reversal? It's a possibility, but there are a couple of things that I'm looking at here that says, this is probably a process that we're looking at. The Fed has been very articulate in saying for them it's a process. And therefore, I have to look at it and say, um, within each sector, and I did this for my subscribers when I do my weekly video, which is about an hour-long video where I'm looking at what's happened, what we're looking at in terms of our own, uh, in terms of the positions we have, as well as what I'm anticipating. And in that context, What's really, I, I would say, key is what happens with the weekly charts in relation to everything that we're looking at. Now, let me just do this. I'm going to, I'll expand this out, and let's just go through it separately. I've got questions that I've been asked. I will get to them, but I'd rather just at the moment show you. That is not just a speck. This is not just a, a, a little piece of, uh, a, a crust of a, a, a bread or a toast right here. That is the price of the TLT, trading at 91.28. 92.23 was the low back in around the 21st or so of August. And it goes all the way back. Uh, maybe you know it'll be even better. Let me do this on a weekly basis because I am going to be talking weekly charts. So let's not mess around. Let's go, just go straight to the weekly charts. So here we are. We're in leg D to the downside in um, the TLT. Most importantly, what I am looking at here is there was a left side, right side price time match. I chose a particular candle as the midpoint, as the plumb line from which you can count the number of bars on the left going up to the number of bars on the right going down back to that point of 91.85. It's a little extra. It's about four weeks longer than I was anticipating. But today we did it. And But look, the MACD is weak. The stochastic is very weak at 15%. But on this chart, the unbalanced volume, this blue line says you are really close to at least an attempt to get back into the 92s, the 92s in the TLT, right? But it doesn't say it's going to happen. It just says when you're this, remember, I use the unbalanced volume. It's the only thing I use as my overbought and oversold uh, readings. I use other things, of course. But that's the one that I say, that's getting overbought. I don't say the stochastic 15% is oversold. That's what all the books tell you, that under 20% is oversold and over 80% is overbought. I say that, I don't know how they came up with that. It is fantastic. Look, when the price holds in the stochastic above 80%, the market is doing well. When it's under 80%, you've got to be careful. When it goes just to 80% or over for a a couple of bars and then breaks down, watch out, you're in serious trouble. So um, I don't like the term. I say that that's what you, if it's if it's over 80%, that's what you want to see if you're long. If it's under 20% and you're short, that's what you want to see. So, okay, with that said, now let me do a couple of other things. Um, that's the TLT. Look at the dollar in the weekly chart. Well, the dollar has all this uh, left side resistance that is testing right now, and that's back in uh, February of this year, the week of the 24th. It goes to 105.32, 105.30, uh, is that 36, 36, the week of the 3rd of March, and then it goes to 105.68. This is the dollar index, the week of the 10th, and then it starts to come down. Well, we're just revisiting that area. So when people say, oh, the dollar's strong, well, you know, it bounced off what? The orange 200-period exponential moving average perfectly. What a beautiful indicator this is. A tool that you just put there. You don't have to use it until you have to use it. All right? And when you use it, look what it, look what it did today in the one-minute chart. Look at this. Um, look, look how you got repelled from this 200-period exponential moving average. Just one tool? Do you have to use it? Can you make fun of it? Sure you can. 
but you better use it when you need it. Uh, right here, look at this. Look, look at the way it tried to hold over there back at uh, 340. Uh, was it yesterday? It must have been, was it this morning? On the uh, 21st. Yeah, that's uh, that's this morning. Early in the morning, look, it couldn't break above it. And that was your, and then it touched it once. It was goodbye. It was goodbye from 4.30 in the morning until it retested it just a little while ago. Right here, I'm scrolling to the right. When did it retest it? Right there. Now, you always get a clue with the 200p moving average. It gets close, gets repelled. But then if it holds pretty well, it's going to break above it, and that's what it did. Now, let's get back to our weekly charts. As we go to the break, the Dow is down 100 and 107. S&P is down 37. Huh, how about that? I'll be right Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, let me just do this because why, why I've got questions coming in. I don't want to run out of time to do the questions. So the question came about Eli Lilly. You remember I said I would be waiting on Lilly because it's had a spectacular move. It needs to be pulling back a little bit more. Great company. If it does make this uh, arch formation, I said, uh, and the nine-period moving average does go pink, 
That means you've got more time, but the whole area, I said, give me a yell at 550, I think it said 553 to 551. We're at 553 right now. It was actually at 568, round number high this morning before as it gapped down. Now, I need more time on this. I, and that that's the, if you look at this, you look at Merck, uh, Merck. Uh, holding on the 200 period moving average hasn't been up 26 cents today, 107.56. We could Nova Disc. I wonder if I notated that recently. I think I remember doing it. Uh, Nova Nordisk, and yeah, I think I did, but now it's gone. Breaking down, uh, there are many others. ABV, AB, I haven't actually updated this for quite a while. Uh, ABBI, is that what it is? ABBI, A. -B -B -I? A, -B -B -I? A VBI. Oh, well, I won't remember it right now. I thought it was ABBI. I guess it's not. Maybe it was taken over or something. Anyway, so that that all of these uh, these particular stocks are just saying to me, hey, let's go back to Moderna. You remember Moderna? I said, got to wait, got to wait. Um, it's holding quite well above the left side low at, at 95. Uh, it's at 101 right now. So... Just give it a little time. So the question, um, ABBV. Oh, of course it's ABBV. <laughs> the den is so helpful. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, ABBV. This is uh, this is holding much much better. It's a different kind of company, and this is ABBV. Um, this is a conglomerate, and I can't remember who it was with. Anyway, it's in the it's in the um, uh, pharmaceutical area, maybe biotech, holding much much better. This is one that I would actually look at sooner than Eli Lilly. Not that Lilly's, there's anything wrong. I just think Lilly is in the uh, digestive phase. This is one that says, I'm still holding really well, even with the marketplace so shaky. And that's what I was talking about when I showed at least three of all these. Remember, I showed you AAP for subscribers. I said, this is advanced order parts. Look how horrible this is. And yet, look at AZO. Same area, AutoZone. Uh, even now, as we're speaking, it's still within uh, a dozen, so at 2,543, the all-time high, uh, well, the most recent high, I should say, was in the uh, 26, uh, 2630s, uh, holding quite well. And the other one was Orly, O-R-L-Y. Look at this. Uh, holding much even closer to its all-time highs. Where if you go to the bank stocks, look at this. You've got Berkshire Hathaway. It's in the financials. It's not a bank, but it's in the financials. So I'm showing it. Berkshire Hathaway. Look at that. Near all-time highs. All-time highs. This is Berkshire Hathaway is the United States economy. It's in everything that's important. Uh, oil, insurance. Oh, you just go on and on. Furniture. You just name it. Banking. Um, uh, just it's a plethora of different things in every field um, and yet look how well it's holding but look at this Bank of America is way down here faltering so I wanted to just mention that it's in the sector let's go to look at rig um, this is Transocean pulling away not it just hasn't been able to break out with oil doing so well yet it's still holding pretty well but look at Exxon Mobil this is a I mean a multi-trillion dollar company. Look, it made that peak C right there, and then it made the leg D. And today it's making, and then yesterday made a peak D. There it is, D. And it's almost at the at the highs. So all of these things are doing different things. So let's go back to Lily, and the question was Lily, and I'm just going to say, hold off on Lily, and I'm going to make, of course, I've already moved quickly past it, every, let me write that down, every, I'm going to just keep it for subscribers as something that we might consider in that area because it's holding so well, but not yet. Okay, so with that, with that said, next question came in. Could I just do Apple quickly? Look at Apple. I don't know if you can do it quickly other than to say the dreaded H pattern. The week hasn't closed. Anything can happen. You've got it until Friday at 4, but it's gone. Look, there's the S. That means that it's gone from a sell signal on the weekly chart I have to wait for Friday, but it's possible it's going to go to a sell mode, meaning it's probably going to take out the 171.96 left side low of uh, August. So we're watching that closely. What was it? Oh, Microsoft. Microsoft. Oh, where did that go? Where did I type it? Type, type, type. We'll put it over there. Microsoft. 
Microsoft arching over peak D, Doji Candle. Uh, the weekly chart has got this arch formation, 366.78 was the all-time high uh, back at the beginning of July. And here it is at 321. It looks like it wants to take out this left side low. It's going to be a very important week coming up. Uh, what, what was the oh, Apple? Uh, Amazon. Amazon. This is the whole retail sector. I'm sure you can actually call it retail. There's a peak D. Down arrow in a sell mode in the daily gap down today. It's down forward 131. That weekly chart made a leg E. It's almost certainly going to be a peak E. And look at the weekly charts. I said I'm going to open these up to show you some fantastic things that happened in the market. Look at 146.57 was the high in July of last year. I think it was July or August last year. It plummets down to 80. I, I, I would have to say that's a 40 something percent decline. 143.63 was the high uh, just four or five weeks ago, uh, just three points underneath the previous high. And then what does it do? It has a big spike last week and it goes to 145.86 within a point, less than a point. Let me just put that in 145. With, <laughs> I can't believe this. It's within one point of a high that was over a year ago. And now it's pulling back. So I am calling this a huge digestive phase. I know there are a lot of people talking about the crash that's coming. The people are talking about the S&P, which is trading at 43.65, uh, going down to the 4,000 level. You could be 100% correct. All I'm saying is, uh, from my eye, because it's taken so much time with so much damage in so many different areas and different stocks, that we've already accomplished a chunk of the digestive phase. We just might need a little bit of follow through on the weekly charts. They might go immediately to a sell mode and that gets switched within uh, a week or two as the markets come back again. I don't know. I'm just saying that's the way I'm looking at it just based on all the evidence. Yes, you can get an RH in the same thing that I'm talking about that you can get uh, – Look at this, Home Depot, here's the weekly chart, Home Depot. Look at that, how it holds so well. 347.25 was the high back in 2022. Pulls back, has a bounce, and it bounces to where? It bounces to 341.47. That was the week of the 3rd of February of this year. It goes all the way to test for three, for about two months. It tests the 200 period moving average, decides to go I see with the buy mode, the A, B, C, D has a quick pullback, goes to E, and where's E? E is at 3817. What's the high we're looking at before? 147. Within two and a half points announced. These double tops and bottom, the double bottoms are really important. That's why the TLT, we've got to monitor real closely. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So look, the SP is only, only down 35. The Dow is actually down. 97. I don't want to see that. There's just intraday. There's just been too much optimism. I would, I as I typed, typed into the den, I would much rather see the Dow down about 370, 385 right now, going into a really ugly Friday. Even if we just we turn around Friday, not Monday. But I there's just not enough negativism here. Almost every day. The, the worst of the Dow has been maybe 200 and something points, occasional 300 points down. Uh, and that's almost like program selling. It's not like the public was just selling, selling, selling. It, something's not right here. And that says to me, we're going to have to take time. This is a process. It's not a simple one and done. So with that said, a couple of questions came in. Would I look at, so this is the one minute chart. You can see it bumping up against the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone right there and the 200 period moving average magnet so we're gonna have to see can it get you it's at 44 40, 44 10 right now can it get to 44 22 that that to me would 44 22 to 25 would be not just a breakout would say wow we could see some buying into the close i i don't think that's the case i think the sellers are there the buyers are there and they mix it up all day so now what i want you to do is this semiconductors this is the weekly chart of the semiconductors. Look, we've got a Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone, which very soon could become a repellent zone. You remember we saw that? Was that Apple, the weekly chart? Apple week? Yes. Apple weekly chart went out of the channel, and that became the resistance. It didn't even get to the resistance because it, it's making the dreaded H pattern, which is a way more powerful thing than any channel because it tells you about the speed of the direction. The speed of the direction is... In the H pattern, when you go only to an A or a B, and the next bars are really very weak, it says be careful because that left side low, it's, it's tempting to take it out. So let's go back to the SMHs. And look, I'll show you this on each one. Here's the semiconductors, um, just for clarity purposes and for uh, um, just the clarification. We are, we are short from two points. 159.35 was the high. Uh, the, uh, two days later, before the open, we went short the the uh, the uh, SMHs at one. Oh no, it was this one. Sorry. Oh, wait, wait, what am I talking about? This is a weekly chart. Uh, let me just get this back up here, and I'll show you something very interesting. So we've got this right here. So here's the daily chart. Yeah, on the 31st of July. 161, 161.17 was the high. Oh, I was meant to show you that, to show you the double tops. Isn't that amazing? 159.42 in November of 2021. Plumbers down to 83. That's a, that's a, almost a 50% haircut. 
comes all the way back and makes a new all-time high at peak D in the weekly chart, uh, G slash B in the in the monthly. I'm suspecting it's only a B in the monthly. An E at 161117 uh, on the 31st of July has a doji candle. Wonderful clue said to me, oh, oh got to be careful because the very next day we went short the Dow on the August the 1st. Uh, yeah, August the 1st. And then the following day, the 2nd of August, before the open at one, one, uh, 159, just over 159, we're short. We remain short. And what's really fascinating about this is that we've also used the SOXS three times short. I had it the other day. We subscribed at 21077. And it just got taken out. And then that intraday market turned. We never got back in. And now look where the SOX three times long is. So I'm not complaining. We've got our short positions. Not a problem. But look at this. Leg D. Above the peak C at 1184 that was made back in August. Now look at this. It's a red candle, meaning that there's an attempt at uh, a rally in the SMHs. Um, but look at that. Over the 1184 high, it went to 1207. Days young. This is the daily chart. But look at that beautiful. Oh, and I forgot to type this in. I thought I had it, and then it got taken out when my program closed suddenly the other day. Look at this. This is the Chapman Wave technique of the plumb line. There's your plumb line. There's your midpoint and anticipating the same number of bars on the left side to get you to the same number of bars on the right. And look, it missed it by one day, and today it took it out. So it's a day late, but it certainly achieved what it needed to achieve. So this says, just on the shorter term, the SMHs, look at this, have taken out the left side low, just as the SOX, SOXS, three times long, short, took out the upside. So 143.35 uh, was the low. Should have put the date on the 18th of uh, August. And today's low is 141.27. Isn't this fascinating? I don't know if we did the one to one to the left side. No, it's a day late here. Oh, it's a day late here as well for the arch formation with the plumb line. Um, and But now look at the weekly chart. Here's your dreaded H. What's the dreaded H in the Chevrolet methodology? We use three basic core um, patterns. One's the straight line, up or down. Straight line, up or down. Others, the cup formation. Others, the arch. So it's just these three patterns. And a mix of the three. One and two or one and three. This is one and three. The dreaded H comes back down, makes a dreaded H, fails at a peak A, takes it out. Fails at a peak A, takes it out, goes to the left side, low, goes to peak A, B, C. Now, the fact that it's gone to a C says that you've used up quite a bit of energy to the upside, but you've also kind of used up the energy for the for the downside smash. So I would say we're very close to at least an attempt to get back to the 144s in the SMHs. But the trend right now says the, the on-balance volume, that's this little line right here. <clears throat> Look at that. That says it's not, maybe if I extend it out. Yeah, even if I extend it out, you can see how oversold we were there when we had the big bounces. So this is not yet oversold enough. Stochastic's at 8%. 8 percent. It's getting to the area that says very, very weak. Let's go back to the, the weekly chart. And the weekly chart is um, holding quite nicely in terms of the unbalanced volume. Stochastic's at 41%. MACD's weak. And... The nine period moving average is still nicely above the 14, but the direction is both of them are down and the price has gone under. We've still got another day and a half to go. I never like to make a call on, on a bar before the time is up. You have to wait for the bar to conclude. Normally, you wait for the bar to conclude and then start the next bar because it could be a continuation pattern. Question about SLV or is it a statement? SLV is the silver chart. Yep, it is trying to turn around. But you look, you've got your dreaded H. Oh, this pattern here, if it makes a successful left side low, it could bounce again and make an H to an M. That's lowercase h to a lowercase m pattern before it really takes it out. Or that'll be the turnaround to the upside. So we can be watching this because this is the H. Hasn't taken out this left side low. Oh, it has. Just did it. Uh, the low was... Uh, 2046, 2045. 
in the SLV, uh, the week of the 30th of June, and the low, that's right, the low... Oh, it's hell. Good. Okay. That's what we're talking about. The lowercase h goes to lowercase m. How it holds the left side to port with that 203 root here, 20.36. Like a magnet. It's cool. It's cool. All right. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So I thought I'd just highlight what I did before because this is a technique that it's just so easy to, uh, to apply. Look, I drew this in. Here's a chap with Inside Track Repellent Zone. I joined those highs. And it made that particular high. Where did the price of the E-mini go? It went right to the number, and then it turned around and took, made a lower low. So, and it took out the key support level. So, you know, technical analysis is all about repeating patterns over and over and over. Uh, I thought I'd do this because I was asked about. So, the SMHs. Where's where are the SMHs going? As far as I can tell, uh, there's a really good chance that we're going to go into this ugly candle right here. And that's the candle of. Uh, the 26th of May with a high of 148.33. Let's go to 148 and a low of 127. And, we'd make, and, and a low of 127. And I would say the midpoint 
that's going to be really critical is 139. A close under 139 at any time says, oh, oh, it's got even longer to go in time. If it holds very well, it says, okay, watch this. Maybe we can have another bounce, and then you can go to what was resistance, and we'll see if the pink, the nine period moving average, which is green in the weekly, turns pink. Look, you can go through any one of these. Applied advanced micro devices. Um, Arch formation goes from a lowercase h to a lowercase m in the daily. Where's my mouse? Hey, mouse, there it is. There it is. And it goes in the weekly, it goes to peak E, and now it's pulling back under the 14 period moving average. NVIDIA, this is this is the, the leader of the group. Uh, we spoke about this. That was an aberration to the top at 502.66. And now it's trading at 416. And it looks very much like the weekly chart is starting to see the price go under the 14 period moving average, but that nine is still way above the 14 and gives it room to bounce. I can go through more. Now the question came in about um, the crude oil. I never did crude oil. The crude oil is holding well. It's down. It's up 51 cents today, right at the 92.81 continuous contract high on the left side, <laughs> and the recent high was 92.43. So here again, you've got the potential for these double tops and double bottoms. Will we see that over the next three trading sessions? We'll talk about that tomorrow in my Tiger Technician's Hour. Check out my opening.